Hello and welcome again to Pickle Help Gaming. Um, today we're going to take a look at a Toho game that's on the Nintendo Switch. But first we have to ask ourselves, what is a Toho? What is this Toho Project thing? Toho Project is a series of games made by a man named Junya Oda, or Zune as he is otherwise and more commonly known, especially amongst the Toho community. Toho Project is a bullet hell vertical shoot 'em up, sort of like 1942, featuring a rather large cast of girls. Seriously, there's like hundreds of them. In fact, there's only two male characters ever, and only one of them actually appears in the goddamn games. He's named Rinsuke Morichika, and he is a shopkeep. Also, Toho Project is a doujinshi, which is a fancy Japanese code word for you can make fan games of this and sell it. I know I did. Oriental Queen and Infant Invincible Nanagon is available on my game jolt. Get it now. Which brings us to Genso Sky Drift, an arcade racing game in which the various Toho girls ride each other like floating skateboards. Mm. Let's dive right in. Please excuse the rogue cinematography as I don't own a capture card and will invest one in the future. But now we head into the game. Genso Skydrift is what happens if you take the physics of Wipeout on the PlayStation 1 and the main gimmick of Mario Kart Double Dash on the GameCube and give it the old Toho paint livery. As you can tell, you select your two girls, each with their own stats and special power-ups, known as spell cards. Once you get into a race, you can swap between the two, a la Mario Kart Double Dash, also, getting to the wipeout part, the controls are a wee bit slippery, as if driving a car over oil and ice. It's not bad in the footage, and I think it, some of this might have been improved due to a recent patch, but, you know, it's still a wee little, little weird. The presentation is alright, the, the music is good, in fact, Toe doesn't really have bad music in general. The graphics are weird, it's sort of like... They're not bad by any stretch of the imagination, but they aren't really pushing the switch. In fact, some of it looks weird, like sometimes the close-up on the faces when you win a race sort of makes them look like wax models. It's really weird. However, I think it's just down to the fact that it was made on a small budget with a small team of dedicated Toho Dojin artists, but their best isn't really the most top-tier things on Earth. The controls, despite the Wipeout-esque physics, are responsive and fun to utilize. The game also features a campaign mode in which the game forces you to play characters that you're bad at. So if you want a story mode, uh, there you go. Another thing is the track design. Some tracks are great, like Mari Circuit, but others like the Scarlet Devil Mansion are a pain because the level designers thought, hey, let's have a track full of 90 degree turns. That would be fun. And it is fun. Um, yeah, so... And all, all in all, despite the game's bad spots, it's a fairly good game. In fact, I highly recommend it if you're a Toho fan or if you're a fan of the Nintendo Switch and need some... and you feel like you want more and Mario Kart just doesn't give it to you anymore. Like, it also helps that this is the closest thing Nintendo Switch owners would ever get to having a remastered version of Mario Kart Double Dash on the Switch, so take that as you may, but, you know, um, I mean, sure, the track design's a bit dodgy, but it's still a good game, you know, all things considered. Anyway, I hope we, you've had a good time watching this, and I hope you have a nice time after this.